Hello, I'm Greg Recke, Recke Mods, and welcome to episode 19 of season three of my Power PC series. Today's episode, we're going to be working on my dual processor 2.7 G5 that we have right here. We're going to be pulling out the liquid cooling system and putting in air cooling. And this air cooling was meant for a 2.0 system. So it's cooling 1400 more uh, megahertz of uh, CPU there, but I think it will handle it quite nicely. It's going to run louder, but it will never short out. And we still don't know what's wrong with this system, so we've got to diagnose it. But before we can do that, we've got to take it apart. And if you can see right here, we have a bunch of Allen keys. Uh, I fix it says that the uh, keys are somewhere between a uh, three millimeter and a four millimeter. No, they're more between a 2.5 and a three. So they're like a 2.75. I've got a 2.5 key. It doesn't really fit, but it should hopefully turn the screws. Uh, it's a little small and I don't think they make 2.75 millimeter Allen keys, except unless you worked for Apple probably. Who knows, there might be some out there, but it's gonna be a challenge to get this cooler out, I think. But uh, we have to take the cooler out, we have to take the power supply out. I'll clean it sometime soon, but I want to try to get the thing running first, and then I'll take it back apart. Yeah, it's counterproductive, but I wanna get it running first. So we're going to be taking the cooler out and the power supply and making sure that nothing has leaked into the power supply. Then if everything's good, we're going to be taking the uh, cooler out, keeping it out and putting these two heat sinks on, redoing the thermal paste, sticking the CPUs back in. That's the plan. So that's what we're going to try to do. And um, well, let's get to it. Okay, so I have no clue how to film this laying down currently with my current setup. So we're going to do it standing up, which is going to be 10 times harder. First, we've got to remove the cooling fan, and then we got to take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws, and then the whole cooler should just pop off. And I've got to remember to unplug this, which I can do right now. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. So the cooler's disconnected. I gotta remove the fan and, well, let's get to it. Two millimeter. It says that some of these are actually, um, I didn't mention the four millimeter. It said that they were between 2.5 and 3.5. So some of these are actually different size. I don't know which ones yet. Probably these ones. Yeah, those might be three. Let's see. Nope, they're all the uh, one we're going to have to use at 2.5. Well, I hope this works. Coincidentally, this is the same Allen key right here that I used to remove the uh, logic board in my uh, 2 comma 1 Mac Pro. So I've had these for a long time. Let's start with this one. Now these are supposed to be captive. They're not. I swore it said that they were. <laughs> so it's uh, going to even be more annoying when they fall into things. I might have to shave down this three mil a little bit because I don't think I'm going to get this screw out otherwise. Some of these are extremely loose and some of these are a little too tight, I think. That one's turning. If it comes down to the last screw, I might improvise. We'll see. No, 
No, don't go in the power supply. Come on. Come here. Good screw. We're definitely taking this nasty absorbent pad out. We're not going to need it anymore anyway. I might have the proper tool downstairs. I'll go look for it and I'll be right back. Okay, so I knocked it loose with a really, really short handled T10 that I had laying in a toolbox downstairs, which means I had to get it in there at a weird angle to do it. Hi, Xena. So I got it knocked loose and now I can use my regular hex key to get it out. So let's see if we can continue getting this thing apart. First off, this is the wrong hex key. <laughs> I love how they said these were captive. They are not captive. I I was reading the wrong tutorial. They are definitely not captive. Okay, it's unplugged and all the screws, oh, I forgot these two. I was about to say, it seemed a little too simple. Uh-oh, not again. Come on, turn. Ah, great. I can't get to those ones. Come on, please. Okay. Now let's see if we can get them, get them loose. Yeah, there we go. Thank goodness. Just leave that there. It's gonna be raining screws in a second. You gotta do this carefully just in case you knock one of the hoses loose. Hey, one of them came off on it. Nice. Okay, all the screws are out. This is in theory supposed to just pop off, which is gonna be nerve wracking because this I think pulls both CPUs out with it. It's what it did in the uh, late 05. So let's see what happens. It's still caught on something. Is it caught on? Here. I got those screws out. Yeah, they're both out. They should just come off. It's out. It's just not coming. There we go. Okay. Now I don't need this power cable anymore. I can just unroute it. And unplug it somehow. I don't know 
how the heck you get it loose. Undo the fan power. There we go. Now, there it goes. Don't need this auxiliary power anymore. And good news is I don't see any leaks. So we might be okay, but we still have to take that apart. So let's put the auxiliary fan, I mean the front fan back in. So I don't forget. I do not see anything, but this is really filthy. But while we're at it, here is the extremely massively heavy cooler. This thing's got to weigh a good 10, 15 pounds. Here's the rivet I snapped out, wedged into the pump. <laughs> and here are the two G5s. Now, it is very common for these to leak. They did leak. They indeed, indeed did leak. I can already tell that. So we gotta clean these G5s and hope that they haven't been corroded. I'm a little worried now, but I can tell they've already leaked. But they didn't leak into the power supply from what I can tell. I don't see any residue. In fact, I'm really tempted on just plugging it in and seeing if it pops, which I really shouldn't do. Let's uh, deal with the G5s first and then we'll figure out what we're going to do here. The dry rotted drip pad does indeed have some uh, crystallization on it, which just landed on my hands. I need to switch over to my gloves because Tex Cool is corrosive and uh, I got to clean my hands off. So, yeah, but that's the drip pad and it's not going back on. Okay, so it's time to pull apart the CPUs. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a little fun. Let's see here. Oh, I can't believe it. This is another leaking cool, uh, cooler. The uh, logic board is probably fine. The CPUs might be damaged. In fact, I see corrosion on the pins. This thing's, uh, it might be running as a single 2.7 now. I don't know if I can clean that corrosion off. And I don't know if I have anything to neutralize it. But we'll see what happens. If we're lucky, it only leaked where it usually leaks, around the O-rings, and it shorted out the cards temporarily, and if we clean them off, they'll work again. Oh boy, I'm a little nervous doing this because I don't want to see the damage which we're about to see. We're definitely going to see damage. This one is the most damaged card from what I can tell. So let's start with this one. Now, if I wanted to go back to liquid cooling, I could go with a Panasonic cooler. They're sealed. Um, the worst thing they'll do is plug up and stop running, probably. Although I've never heard of any of them actually filling. Um, I could go with a Panasonic cooler, but I don't want to spend that kind of money because they're extremely expensive because they were extremely rare. So this Delphi is cooler is going bye-bye, and these are going in its place. Which I hope I can save these. I can't think of anything I have to neutralize it, so the only thing I can do is grab a toothbrush and scrub it with some IPA and hope that fixes it. And the CPU popped off the cooler. 
Let's see how bad it is. Oh boy. get that off <laughs> sad where she doesn't realize that I'm the one making the noise uh, yeah it's not terrible it did leak but I honestly think the power supply is probably fine. Can't get the VRM heatsink off. Is this screwed in? It is screwed in. Of course it is. Um, hmm. There it goes. It just popped off. It's honestly not horrible. I've seen a lot worse online. This is manageable. You can see all the corrosion through here. This is probably why it was diagnosed as a bad logic board. All these little capacitors, which if this stuff stayed on long enough, will actually chew off. Um, I'm hoping that's not the case. But all these little capacitors, Dex cool, Dex cool is conductive, so, They've all shorted out together, and hopefully once it's clean, they won't short out anymore, and the card will work again. So we'll have to clean out the card with a lot of IPA. But while we're here, let's take this VRM heat sink off that we don't need anymore. And yes, this cooler is going to go to a cooler collector AKA J. Vry. He wants this cooler, he can have it. I'll show you what the cooler looks like after I uh, clean this off. Starla, get away from it. This cooler's, this VRM heat sinks on really good. I keep bending the pipe. Pipe's no longer good, probably, but it doesn't really matter. Um, what can I do to pry this off? Try this flathead. If you do it carefully enough, it should just pop. There we go. Eh, that's probably salvageable enough. We still gotta take it off anyway. We need to take these two pegs off. So I can just drop this into a little bath. Then dry out and et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's the first G5 right there. Yeah, while we're at it, let's let's get the two pegs off. So the, since this card looks so good, it makes me worry that the other card looking good is actually just tricking me. So I'm worried about the other card. all the screws for the first card. And I gotta move that pad over to one of those. But let's get the second card off. Now considering this thing hasn't been turned on since 2013 probably the fluid hasn't been moving around at all 
So if it was leaking and shorted out and shut off and no one ever tried to start it again, it might be okay, the power supply, I mean. I really don't want to pull that power supply out, but I have to. It's, it's mandatory, you really have to. So we're gonna convert these heat sinks, these CPUs to the new heat sinks, the second I finish cleaning them. Cleaning them, I'm not gonna show on camera, but I'll talk about it briefly. I don't know how you clean Dex cool off. I'm going to use 90% IPA and I am going to scrub it off with um, a toothbrush. If that doesn't work, well, might try some vinegar. It does get corrosion off of things. But vinegar also is conductive, if I remember correctly, so I still have to clean it off again with IPA. Decisions, decisions. If I'm lucky, I don't have to clean this card. It doesn't look bad. That one's pretty bad. In fact, I didn't show you. The connector is green. I don't know if that's showing on the camera. I hope it is. The connector's green, so it actually seeped into the connector here through what looks like this uh, hole right here. So, yeah. Let's pop this off. It too leaked. It leaked quite nicely. It's it's also bridged. In fact, a few of these capacitors look worse. In fact, it looks like it leaked worse, but it sealed itself around the CPU. That if you have a G5 that's liquid cooled, open it up. This is why. Uh, yeah. So this card also has to be fixed. So I'm going to take these pegs off and the VRM heatsink, and I'm going to clean these cards off and we'll continue on after I get the cards all cleaned up. So yeah. I forgot to show you guys the pump. This is the number one place where they leak, is around the O-rings which goes in here. Dexcool eats through the rubber O-rings and it just, just kills the, uh, the O-rings. They leak everywhere and then the system's dead. And this crystallization is from the heat and the air, oxygen mixture, all reacting and uh, causing this to happen. Because they say, uh, I've read that Dexcool is supposed to neutralize itself when it hits air. I don't believe so, because it still corrodes stuff pretty badly. And uh, this is corrosion. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna go clean the cards now. Okay, so I thought about it. And why not show you guys a little bit of what I'm doing? I've never done this before, and it's gonna make me very nervous doing this. Uh, we're gonna basically, basically bathe it in IPA. And this is the purest you can get in the store usually. So it should help. And we'll have to let these dry nicely. The problem is with all this corrosion on them, there's a good possibility when they get wet, they will uh, start losing components because the corrosion might actually be holding the components on. So we'll start off with the bad card that Xena back up because if you lick this thing, it might kill you. Back up. Back up, back up. Okay, so I'll set, which one's worse? They both have green on the connectors. That's great, that means I gotta clean the logic board too. Uh, oh boy. So let's just try this and see what happens. Start with 
the connector. Just pour a little bit on there. It actually looks like it might be doing something. Yeah, we might, might actually get this clean. You gotta be careful doing this. You don't wanna bend the pins. But if I can get most of the corrosion out of the pin, we'll be all right. It is not coming off the board though. These might need to be bathed for a while. Let's see what this side does. It is getting some of the corrosion out. You don't want to be scrubbing too hard because you don't want to snap anything off. But yeah, I think this might work. Can't get the exposed grounding lugs here clean. But the contacts themselves are getting pretty clean. And the toothbrush is starting to turn a bluish green color. Yeah, it, it's clean enough. Clean the CPU while I'm at it. Just peel the gasket off, really. I don't know if I can, <laughs> or have to, probably. Yeah. There's the gasket. Don't need the gasket. Get this nicely cleaned off. Run this down here. Start scrubbing again. It's looking better already. And I think we're lucky. I don't think the corrosion actually loosened anything on this car. This might be salvageable. It still has a little bit of corrosion on it, but really at this point, it's cleaned off enough where it would probably work now. I don't know, this side's still pretty bad. But yeah, this is what I'm doing. I'm just scrubbing it away. Hoping it will come off. I need to probably start scraping it with something carefully just to make sure all the corrosion gets off the capacitors. What can I do that with? See if this budget works. this spudger. Like something's been chewed out here. I still think it might be salvageable. It's not easy to get off, I'll tell you that much. It is a bit of a challenge. 
but it is indeed coming off. And it's looking very nice. So yeah, I'm going to have to do this to the other card too. And it's not totally cleaned off, but it's pretty close. So it's going to have to dry for a while. But as we can see, I got most of the corrosion off, except those blue areas. And it actually looks like marker there. I don't see any real corrosion left on there. So this card's what I'd call clean. The pins are still a little corroded, but they might work now. I'm gonna scrub them one more time, and we'll see if that helps. It looks a lot better than it did. So I'm going to say that is a good start for that one. It may still need a little cleaning. We'll have to see. I'm going to do the same thing to the other card, but I, I don't feel like filming it because it would be a, just, just more editing for me. You guys saw how I cleaned this one and inside the bowl is a bunch of green goo. So uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely cleaning it. So, yeah, this, once it dries out, might be okay now. I don't see any burn marks or anything where it's shorted out, so it should be all right. So I'm going to clean the other one, and we'll get back to it. Okay, so I got the other G5 card cleaned off here, and here are the two finished products here. They will need to dry for a few hours. Uh, well, probably not a few hours, but they'll need to dry some. And uh, then I can start reassembling the uh, system here. I am going to have to clean the socket a little bit, I think, on the G5, which is pretty hard. And we'll take a look at it. If I don't see any major damage, it might be all right. So we will see. Okay, guys, so I took a look at the uh, logic board, and it looks pretty good. I don't see any real damage. There are a few pins that look a little corroded, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. The only thing I did find was one of the pins is really, really bent. Like, so bent that it would prevent the system from booting up because it's grounding out to another pin. Now, that pin's got multiple contacts on it, so even if I accidentally snapped it off, it would still probably work because those pins and they're like a three prong that go around these pieces on the back of the card, okay? So if one of the prongs snap off, in theory the connection should still be good. So I'm going to try to straighten that pin some, and if it snaps off, it's probably not going to be a big deal, but it's going to be very nerve-wracking for sure, so... Yeah, um, other than that, the logic board seems fine. I did not see any evidence that anything has ripped down in the power supply. I still don't want to take it out. I'm trying everything not to take it out. I'm still probably going to take it out just to be sure. But yeah, hi, dog. Um, so I'm going to take them out and then I'm going to uh, try to get these onto here. Um, there was a problem with these, the little card standoffs um, snapped off the heat sink. So it's missing some standoffs. I have them all and we'll try to get them to all sit flush, but that's annoying. So yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to Start working on these cards, get this board fixed, and um, pull the power supply out. I really don't want to. But that tells you what was probably wrong with the logic board. It had one bit pin because the last guy servicing it popped it back together and bent something. 
and it may have been running, but it wasn't running right. And that's why he diagnosed it as a bad board instead of fried CPUs. Now the CPUs look fine now. I think they're fine. They'll probably work fine. But we won't know until we get this whole system back together and until we find out if the power supply is in one piece and if it has any power to it in the first place because it hasn't been turned on since 2013. So we will see what happens. Okay, so I did the surgery on the socket. Um, used a SIM card tool from the iFixit kit and just lightly pressed on the uh, pin and it went back into place pretty easily. Um, I also um, tapped the pin on a few of the other pins to get some of the corrosive stuff off of the system and it seems to have cleaned the sockets both pretty well. I don't see any more damage or anything like that. So now we're going to take the power supply out, which I don't want to do. Uh, but we need to. <laughs> That's the only way we'll find out if the power supply is safe to plug in. And if it looks good, we'll plug it in. But um, we got to take it out first. That's all of it. This comes out under there, like that. I think that's the whole power supply. So we take these two screws out, and this panel, I believe, lifts off. I skimmed over the instructions, so we're going to find out if it lifts off or not. But it should be these two screws, and then there's four screws on the bottom, and the power supply should fall out. So, yeah. Well, I can tell you one thing, the power supply is very nasty. Clean this tray off real quick. Okay, so I do not see any evidence still that the cooler leaked. So we might be okay, but we still have to open up to make sure. Which uh, is going to be fine. So we got to take these four screws out and then the power supply should just pop right out. If you remember when Ken powered his power supply on it blue, this is what he's going to have to do to pull it out. Okay, so we can now lift it back up. The power supply should just pull right out. And it does not want to come out. Here it goes. It's fine, Ray. <laughs> There's nothing pushing on it or holding it in. It should just come right out. And it is not coming out. I'm about to say the power supply is fine. We don't have to take it out. I wish we didn't have to take it out. I will see if I can get this. I don't think I can get the uh, heat sink stand off. Off. I think that's what hold, what's holding them in. So I forgot about that connector. That might be part of it. This is the uh, backboard fan connector, I think. There. Now, 
now it might come out. Six hundred watts max. I figured this would have a thousand or something in it. It might be easier if I lay it down. It's so light with no CPUs in it. Yeah, that counts. And there's the power supply. And I don't see any evidence that anything leaked in it. I really don't feel like opening it. I should, though. It's pretty dusty. But um, I don't see any damage whatsoever from the outside. Opening these things, of course, can be deadly. But I've opened up a lot of them in my lifetime. I probably won't kill myself. I don't want to open it, though. I think what I'm going to do is do a visual inspection. Because I'm lazy. I'm going to say it's fine. Then again, I should open it. So let's open it. Oh boy. <coughs> How does it open? It looks like it hinges. Got two here, one there, one there, and then I think it hinges upwards. So let's get this one behind the sticker. That one's out. I hope there's nothing in this. I hope it's fine. We will find out. You guys can't even see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm unscrewing screws, so sorry. Um, I'm not moving the camera. I think that's all the screws that are required to open the thing. I don't see anything else that holds it together other than maybe the front fans. But I don't think they actually hold anything together. It should just... I don't know how it opens. I'd say it hinges. It looks like it slides back maybe. Yeah, it slides back and then tilts backwards, I think. Which means I gotta take this stupid sticker off. I have no clue how this slides back. I don't know why it's still holding it back. Just finish pulling the sticker off. You don't need it. And now there should be nothing holding this together. <sighs> Let's see if the drip pad actually did its job. If I can figure out how this comes off. These gaskets pop out. Thank you. 
<laughs> this is really annoying. I have no clue how this power supply opens. No clue whatsoever. It should just slide open. Oh, wait a minute. I see two more hidden screws right here. Yeah. Yeah, those are screws. Those are warranty screws. Really, really tight warranty screws. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Mm. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Well, I can't get the last two screws out. They're too tight. That's not good. I want to work on this for a minute. I got them out. So now that they're out, now the panel should just slide. Slide. Why is it not sliding? There it goes. Okay. All right. We got progress here. There we go. Oh God, that's dusty. <laughs> there we go. <coughs> I can safely say we didn't need to open it. It looks totally fine other than the fact, the fact is it's, it's very, very dusty. <coughs> uh, I'm allergic to dust. I'm really allergic to dust. Oh, 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 oh God, it's killing me. Oh, <coughs> I'm all right. I'm all right, girl. I'm all right. I'm okay. I just need a bit of hair. I'm all right. Oh, oh, okay. So I'm going to blow this out really quick and put it back together and put it back in the case. And then we'll reassemble the, the G5. We now have the power supply back in and it seems to be all ready to go back together. I'm still having problems breathing though. Lots of dust, as you can see. Um, believe it or not, I washed this uh, panel right here. You can't tell it. It's, it's, might permanently be like that. It's that nasty. Um, I should just clean the whole system, but I really don't feel like doing it. So we're going to put in the essentials and get it ready to boot up. I'm going to assemble these G5s off camera and show you the end product of what they look like with the heat sinks on. And then I'll show you how to install the heat sinks. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the first G5 assembled here, as we can see. It's what it should look like. And it is ready to go back in the case, but we need to rebuild the other one first. And this time, I think I'll show you guys how you do it. It's, I had to figure out how to do this one first, and it's pretty simple and straightforward. First, I need to get this bracket off because it's in the wrong place, apparently. So I have to squeeze and pull both brackets off. It just goes right back in. Thanks for putting this in the wrong slot, guys. I'm talking to the seller that sold this to me. Um, hmm. I can't figure out how to get it off. I got the other one off. So I'll work on this for a second. So we got that bracket out. I 
And what we need to do here, I've already cleaned the bottom of this heat sink. Actually looks like it needs it done again. I must have fingerprinted it. It rocks. The late 05 one doesn't do that. Now it's clean. We need to prep the card. Now this one's got a lot more broken standoffs than the other one did. So I gotta put those on the card first. I need one, well, all the rest of them. And I gotta figure out where they go. I have to set those in the card first. It's gonna go in like this. So I need a standoff here. Here, yeah, here, like that. Need one. Am I holding this heat sink backwards? Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, I'm wrong. It needs to go like this. I need one here. And then one here, go oh, here, here, and two there. And that will get all the standoffs in the order. We got to put in the metal pins. I don't know if you guys can see this. You're not seeing it right now. Got to put the metal pins right here. They have to stick outwards. So one goes here. This helps line the CPU up into the hole it's supposed to go into for the socket. And we'll put in the other one real quick. And then we'll tighten them down. Then we need to put the thermal paste on. Can you see the top? Not really. Okay, well, we got to put the thermal paste on. Wipe this off. Spread it just like the factory would do. Nice even spread. Perfect. Now, before we put this on, we have to put the VRM cooler heat sink on, which lines up to the back like this. Like that. We need the screws for it. There's one of them. I don't see the other one right offhand, but we'll find it. It's hard to do it on the camera. Now we can tighten it down. Now I need to, I don't know if I can show you how to clip the VRM in old thermal paste. What we're going to do is, set this here for a second. This has to go on here, three down, like that, and then, you set the CPU on, lining it up with the posts until it falls in to its place. Like 
that. Then you line this up again. It's a little crooked. Three ends should have it probably in that hole there. So, is that right? Yeah. So we bend this out the way. And it should slide down in there, which it's not doing. This is frustrating, I'll tell you that much. I've already knocked the CPU loose. It's just not going in. This is a lot harder than the last one. I think this bracket must be a little bent. Anyway, it goes in like that, and it's supposed to clip into two holes, and these are supposed to clip in here, right there, like that. I'll work on it, but let's get this back on. Yeah, it might still need more repositioning. But let's put the uh, CPU in to the heatsink itself. Switch to hex. Now that that's on, we still need to put these posts in, but I want to try to get this VRM heatsink mounted properly. There we go. Now it's in place. Now we can put the screws in. And that's how you rebuild the CPU for air cooling. It all is all ready to go back in. We're going to put it back in in a second. But first off, I need to make sure I have all the right tools. And for some odd reason, I keep smelling formaldehyde. I'm taking a wild guess. It's coming off of one of these cards. Which is probably not healthy, considering formaldehyde's poisonous. But, uh, well, so let's start with the bottom. That should be CPU B. That should be CPU A, I think. So let's put those in. It doesn't matter which one it is. As long as they're both in. They should work. I hope. This will also tell us if one of them is dead because if CPU A is bad, it won't post. If it posts, it means at least CPU A works. Doesn't mean B works, but it should post at least. So, this is actually really nerve wracking. can't see what I'm doing. All right, I'm going to lay this on the side. Sorry, guys. You're going to have to look at the bottom of the case for a second. I'll turn it back around when I get it. But basically what I'm doing is I'm clipping them both in and then screwing them in one by one. So I'll put this one in and screw it in. And I'll show you what it looks like. The score basically looked like that with screws in it. So I'll be right back in a second. Let's back out. Set it right there.
So here's another problem with redoing C, uh, G5s. When you put them back in, you gotta make sure they're actually in. You push down on them carefully, make sure you don't break it, but push down on it, make sure it's in the socket, because that's the biggest mistake most people do. They'll put it back in, tighten it down, but never make sure that G5 is actually plugged in. And the system won't boot, and they're going to be freaking out. A lot of people do, especially on low-end Mac. And this is as simple as pushing on the heat sink and popping the G5 in. Um, so always make sure it's really in there. This is going to be a challenge. I don't think these are magnetic. No, they aren't. Oh boy. Okay. I wonder if I can magnetize it real quick. New iFixit kit has a magnet in it. It's semi magnetic. It might work. You watch, I'm going to drop this. And I can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to have to steal your light. Enjoy the dark, guys. Okay. I need one there, one there, one there, and one there. It's four, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah. And it fell. No, don't fall. Ah. Feel, I had a feeling that's what happened. Must miss that hole. All right, so CPU A is now in. And, well, no, that's B. I think that's B. B is now in. Let's put A in. And then you'll see what it looks like. Oh, this is fun. It's the most nerve-wracking thing I've done in a long time. Okay. Now this one's gonna be harder to do because the screws are harder to access. So if we set the screws in first, they'll feed through the hole. These are expanding posts. So as long as you get them shoved down on the posts, it should, in theory, be fine. I've never done it this way before. I didn't do it on my late 05 this way. Or the mid 03. I don't think the mid 03 has this kind of system in it though. So, here comes nothing. I can't get the back of the CPU card in. The front seems to be going in. The back's not going in. So, I'm going to have to leave the two back screws out for now. And then try to snake them in. Otherwise, I don't think it's going to go on. <clears throat> Got it. I 
Okay. Are they all in place? They are all in place. I get stuck to the case. I didn't know that was magnetic. Great, I gotta fish this out. Got it. Now we can tighten it down. We're getting close to actually be able to turn this on. And I just realized there's no screw in the machine for the video card. It's annoying. You don't need it though. Both heat sinks are lined up. I am glad this wasn't air cooled being converted to liquid cooled because I would have never gotten these screws out. I may still not get these screws out in the future. I'm glad I cleaned the bottom half of the system. We are getting very close to getting this to run. I am getting excited. Now, I don't have a hard drive preset up for this, and it may not even boot with the hard drive that I have in it because it's not formatted properly. And PowerPC systems don't like that. So, we're not going to put a hard drive in, we're just going to try to boot it off a CD. The screw won't go in, or come out. There it goes. I think. No, it's not moving. This must have been one of those stripped ones. No, don't come off with the... Mm. It's like the crane game, only a lot more nerve-wracking. See if I can get this T10 down in here. It might reach. I might have to cool this panel back some. Well, the T10, yeah, the T10 will work. I can get this back in here. Well, I don't think it's going anywhere. And it seems to be tightened in there. It's just not sitting in there right. Maybe a good snack will fix it. No. It just does not want to go in. Let's see if I widen the hole enough for a three mil. Just about. In fact, it's sort of turning with it. I think it's going to be fine. It doesn't seem to be loose. So, let's put your light back on. Okay. And here is the converted system. Now, it still needs a few parts left. It needs the fan, it needs the video card, it technically needs a hard drive, but we're not going to put that in yet. We're going to see if it posts and boots first. Um, 
So first, let's put the RAM in. G5s, the RAM goes from the inside out. So here and here is one. So I got two gigs of RAM here. Just for testing purposes, I actually ordered an eight gig kit. So we should be good. When that kit comes in, if this thing boots up, All right, so we got RAM. We need the back fan, which I don't know where I put. There it is. We have to feed the back fan in first. here like that which it wasn't before which means someone had taken it out and didn't know how the hell to put it back in so yeah the last thing we need to do is plug in uh, I think it's the second most powerful AGP card ever for a power Mac which is the X800 XT um, it's a nice card so we're going to plug that in right here into the AGP Pro slot. Which I can't line up or even see what I'm doing. Okay, it should just clip right in. Have no screw for it right now, which is bugging me. We could put one of those screws in it. That's everything you need for it to be functional, except for it's missing at the front fan and the shroud and stuff. Let's just finish putting it back together. This actually I don't think works anymore because this is meant for the air cooler, I mean liquid cooler. It's not going to quite fit now. It's supposed to clip on right there. I didn't think about that, but it should be all right, I think, once we get the cover back on. It's, yeah, it's, it doesn't really fit. Didn't think about that when I was converting this, that that wouldn't fit. <laughs> First, let's get this stupid panel on. Oh my God. You 
Okay. Supposed to go in there and then like a clip. But you can't do now. So it doesn't really fit anymore. But it, it sort of fits, so let's get the fan on. Hopefully it will go down. Now that this is holding it all warped and not really lining up. Yeah, that works. All right, we got that in. The fan itself, though, it doesn't want to go in. It's supposed to be flush right here, so the side panel can go on, which I don't think it's going to do. It doesn't fit because the stupid fan won't go in. I'm getting mad now. Did that pop back out? Ooh! Yeah, I'm mad now. Now now it's where vibrating rock. I'm gonna to have to get the actual piece that needs to be there, I think. But now the panel should go on. Like that. Yeah. That bugs me though. Because that's going to rattle like crazy. But now we can put the side panel on and plug it in and see if it works. I'm nervous. So, we'll plug it in and see what happens. Okay, so I haven't plugged it in yet. And forewarning, when this plugs in and starts up, it's going to be very loud. And that's because it thinks there's a liquid cooler in it, but can't detect any liquid cooler voltage or anything. Uh, so it doesn't know what to do. I'll have to run a calibration test on it to have it reconfigure itself for the air cooling. So it's going to probably run with the fans max. It's going to be extremely loud, but we'll see if it posts. We're going to plug it in now and pray that this... This will go to the G5. Whoa. Whoa! Does not happen. So, uh, let's find out. Three, two, one. No pop. That was a good power on noise. All right. In three, two, one. It bombed. It bombed. It bombed. And it's actually pretty quiet. 
So, of course, show a video. Please show a video. There's the fans. So yeah, it still needs calibrated, but let's see if it will boot into a Tiger CD, which I'm not really sure. I think this supported the first version of Tiger, which is what I have over here right now. The optical drive's not ejecting. What? There it goes. All right. Let's see if it boots. Wow, that's that's pretty darn loud. And once we get the CD booted, we can run System Profiler and make sure both CD, I mean CPUs, are showing. sort of maintaining its fan speeds. Sort of. It's getting loud again. It's going to be like this until I calibrate it. And I'll calibrate this in episode 20, which will be the season finale. Which I wasn't sure if this was going to be the season finale machine or not. But if both CPUs work, it's going to be great. And I'm apparently scaring the heck out of my dogs. I'm sorry. I'm not yelling at you girls. I'm yelling at the camera because I can't hear over the darn thing. It's all right. Well, it's still booting, which is uh, hopefully a good sign. Hey, yeah! Back up, Zena. No, don't touch the camera. Get back, get back. Utilities. System profiler. Please show both. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. I got faith in you. I got faith in you. Yeah! We have successfully air converted this sucker and rebuilt it and fixed it. Two CPUs, both at 2.7 gigahertz. This thing is alive. It's alive! I'm really happy, guys. You would not believe how happy I am because this was an annoying labor of love. Um, I still got to find a fan shroud thing for that. But other than that, put a new hard drive in it, calibrate it, and we're all set. So that's the end of today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching me fix this thing. It was fun and frustrating at the same time. And I almost thought we weren't going to get it to work. We got it to work. So once again, don't forget, I am now sponsored by SellYourMac.com. So if you have an Apple device you'd like to sell, just go to SellYourMac.com slash RockKMods and sell something. It will help me out and it will help you out because you'll be making money. And I'm running out of breath because I'm screaming at the camera right now. <laughs> Sorry. And also don't forget, I now have a Patreon. If you'd like to support me, just uh, click on the link at the end of the video or in the description below. I show these videos a day early if you want to check them out. And it helps me out. It helps the channel out if you come and support me. You don't have to. The channel's free. Woo, I'm really getting lightheaded screaming. You don't have to, the channel's free, but I'd greatly appreciate it, and it would help me out a whole lot to keep buying stuff like this, which I thought was a waste of money for a second there. I don't think it is now. Woohoo! Anyway, guys, that's the end of today's video, and thank you guys for watching. This has been a Rock Mods video.